Chinese bonds, foreign ownership is ratcheting higher, 8% in terms of foreign ownership. Chinese bonds are outperforming the U.S. Treasuries. With all this stimulus being thrown at it, what comes next in terms of the bond market and ownership? And would you buy Chinese bonds? Well, I think it's a very interesting I mean, question. Obviously, the, the Chinese market is opening up to the broad indices. We've seen that in the equity market, and we're seeing that in the fixed income markets. It's also, as you mentioned, as a very interesting diversifier, right, because it is not exactly going to follow U.S. monetary policy, although obviously be related. Um, and so we like Chinese bonds as a diversifier for the portfolios. And obviously, as that market opens up, as liquidity uh, improves, obviously yields higher than they are in the Treasury market. We're going to take a close look at that. Mm, you've mentioned Treasuries. You've <laughs> mentioned diversifiers. So I'm going to move to a chart that I've got here, basically uh, showing the negative correlation between five-year tips and the S&P 500, the strongest since 2012. You can show this in various ways. You yep. can put it against Treasuries, et cetera. But what is this telling you about risk parity? Well, this is an incredibly important chart. Actually, for all investors, not just fixed income, mm. but also equity investors, because what it tells you is that the Treasury market is an offset to the risk in your portfolio. In other words, when the S&P rallies, we saw it yesterday in the last few days, the Treasury market sells off. Yesterday, Treasury market rallied, S&P sold off. That wasn't the case in 2018, in part because of the Fed monetary policy increment, you know, increasing rates. But with that increasing behind us, in some respects, and the Fed on hold for the next six months, investors can then own Treasuries as a hedge to their overall portfolio, whether it's fixed income or equities. And that allows you to actually take more risk because you can actually hedge some of the risk with the Treasury market. So this negative correlation, this risk parity is an incredibly important theme for all investors. Uh, just carrying on from that, uh, there, was a, there was another bond story this morning which sort of carries along this theme that Nair has touched on, which is about 10-year paper and the similar maturity of tips. The, the differential between those is the widest since just before Christmas. Now, that suggests a, a little bit of inflation angst in, in the market. Uh, has, that run, has that run its course in terms of that differential? No, you know, Matt, so this is also a very interesting point. So the inflation protection in, in tips has increased, which is to say that the break-even has widened. We think that's likely to continue, and there are a number of reasons for that. First, the Fed is on hold for six months, maybe longer, so real rates, even at 80 basis points, look attractive. Second is that the U.S. economy is actually doing fairly well. We're going to see a slowdown in the fourth quarter for a number of, of reasons related to the government shutdown, et cetera. But as we look at acceleration into, the, into next year, we look at a slowing but growing U.S. economy. And finally, I think it's very important is that the Fed members are beginning to talk about average inflation targeting, which actually is incredibly important, which it suggests that they would allow inflation to go over the target in the medium term to offset some of the below target inflation that we've had. So all of those three things, in, in my mind, make tips actually very attractive right now. Yeah, and the average inflation targeting is really interesting, and I've been wondering at what point does the bond market actually get its head around that yeah. and believe that we could at some point see this overshoot in inflation. The Fed can't generate inflation, though, or can it? Well, I mean, I think monetary policy is obviously has a dual mandate, right? Full, yeah. full employment and, and inflation. And, and obviously, they've managed to do the first one, yeah. <laughs> as, as noted. And we'll get you know, information about that at the end of the week, which I think will be positive. But I think the second one is a little bit slower moving. And obviously, there have been questions about the relationship between the employment rate and inflation. But on balance, I would say that the you know, inflation profile continues to improve, in particular, if they are more relaxed about the level of inflation going forward. And I think it makes, it makes tips very attractive.